I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. The bloop. The bloop. The bloop. The bloop. The bloop. Do you, uh, do, do you remember the bloop? Mood. The bloop. I do. I do remember the bloop. It was probably just a piece of ice, ice. falling off the uh, Arctic shelf. Yes. Or Antarctic shelf. One of the two. Yes. Uh, also, Merry Cryptids, Miss. That's the new holiday I, I invented. Uh, what day is Merry Cryptids, Crypt, Cryptids, Miss? Is it um the twenty eighth? It's, it's I, let's call it the twenty eighth because uh we missed we missed Crib Miss. The December twenty eighth is Cryptids, Miss. That's okay. Uh, that's that's, the day that's that, um uh, that's definitely gonna be the fact. Forever, For, we're definitely not going to forget that next year. We will never forget that it's cryptid miss, and that's when um, Bigfoot had uh, gave birth to a perfectly healthy human um, without having had any sexual intercourse. Well, that's that's where humans come from. Humans are Bigfoot humunculi. No, no, we were born immaculately from Bigfoot. That was the that's the creation myth of. Uh, Cryptopedia. Yes. Which we were immaculately a, we were immaculately conceived, conceived from wow. nothing out the cooch of some Bigfoot or ass, I don't know. Is Bigfoot gendered? Do they have cloaca? Bigfoot, I like this. Bigfoot has cloaca. I like this. I like this turn you know, if you listen back to our, our earlier episodes, uh they were shorter had uh, commercials facts. that effort was put into facts, and we were trying to uh, make it seem like we were recording from some form of underground bunker. Uh, I mean, we still are. Shut chamber. up. I mean, we are. I rem- Oh, yeah. no. <clears throat> uh, did we just... Uh, the, veil, the veil is gone. Oh, no, Brandon. Um, yeah. I'm sorry I was listening to you, but something came across my feed that needs to be discussed. Oh, no. What this is- Brandon is that this is what the nativity looks like on crypt on uh, cryptid miss. Oh, that's amazing! I really hope some it- kid added those and didn't tell anybody. Actually, no, I'm guarantee you that's what happened. I'm looking at Yu-Gi-Oh. I- I'm, I'm going to guarantee you that that is an adult who did that. Oh, uh, that's even better. We're looking I'm at not, a, I- uh, a nativity yeah. scene with Yu-Gi-Oh and um, not Yu-Gi-Oh. What was that well, guy's it's- name? What it's. Okay, first of all, it's Yugi. First of all, Yugi O is not the name of the character. And in particular, that's Yami Yugi, because you can tell because his hair is different and he's not wearing his school uniform properly. He's a badass. Yami Yugi's the badass. Yugi's the, the little sad boy who's got the, like, rounded eyes. Yami Yugi's got them sharp eyes and the angry look. Um, it's uh, Seto Kaiba. I, I lost my Yugi O knowledge. I. Once I gain knowledge, I don't lose it. Um, so my knowledge from the furry wars is a lot. <laughs> oh no! The, the fr- is that like the Clone Wars? It's kind of like the Clone Wars, except there's a lot more yiffing. Oh, some hot <laughs> yiffing, some hot yiff action. Oh man, <laughs> I had a thought and then I lost it. Yeah, well, talking oh. about talking about yiffing usually yeah. makes people forget about everything. Let's be real; that, it's just too hot for TV. Yeah, uh, it's a good thing we're not TV. It's a good thing we're a podcast audio media because, oh man, people would have just lost it on that one. It's just really hard to clean out of the fursuit. The fibers. Well, that's why they there's stick that's together. why there's the hatch. That's why there's the hatch. <laughs> You're a monster. Oh, talking about monsters. Um, Sweet Home on Netflix. Uh, pretty good Korean horror what is it? series. Oh, okay, where like people turn into monsters. Um, Sweet Home. Sweet Home is what it's Sweet called. Sweet Home. It's it's, it's Alabama. Actually, pretty good. I don't want to give too much away, but um, they it's a Korean horror film and like people who I guess ex- they don't outright say it, but people who exploit. Oh, it's based on a webtoon. 
yeah, people exploit like some of of the seven deadly scenes, like uh, like if you desire seven something, seven deadly scenes, seven deadly scenes. So like if you desire something like, you might turn to like some weird demon with a big mouth that eats people. It's kind of cool, but I watched seven episodes in a row. And then went to bed, and then I had some uh, very weird dreams. Look at, search for, like, I don't even know if you can find it. Sweet. I'm looking at the manga, or, or the webtoon right now. Oh, that's Are, that's a great, that's a great image. It looks like a man has a, has a uh, orange for a head, but yeah. it's cut in half. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, wow. The show actually follows these monsters pretty closely, but in a more horrifying way. Um... Yeah, well, the, that guy the, doesn't have a neck. The Netflix that's, show actually that's like a problem. He he can't turn and look at things. That's problematic for him. Yeah, I but he's a, got so many muscles. I guess it doesn't really matter too too much. Yeah, that gave me some weird dreams. Like I was in the show, but like, it wasn't as scary as a. It wasn't a nightmare. Like I was in the show and there were monsters, but it wasn't a nightmare. But also, I was horny. I think. Hey, I get it. And that I'm, I'm looking at out. these monsters. I'm looking at these monsters. They get you horny. No, that's why it's confused. That's like if you, if if you follow me on Twitter, one, I'm sorry, and two, when I said weird dreams, that meant like I don't understand why I woke up in the show, but then a horniness. I get it. Just horny these for are some monsters. Horny ass monsters, dude. I'm horny for monsters. These are some horny, horny monsters. Look at this tongue. I get it. That. <laughs> Look at the tongue on this monster. If you're not weird. horny for that, there's something wrong with you're you. Just horny for monsters. Merry Cryptid. So this this podcast er, it, this episode's earning its uh explicit tag, I think. Yeah, we didn't so, outright say anything. No, it's earning it. Bad. It's earning it. You I just, just say, I just referenced the H I just referenced a monster tonguing you to tonguing you to to the point of horniness. Yeah, but I mean, like, who, the monster might, that just might be the monster's thing. Hey, hey, Dad, what's what's tonguing someone to the point of horniness? What are uh, you listening to, son? Oh, you just reminded me of, I'm, I'm, uh, see, the problem is that the store name is also the last name of real humans, and I don't want to blow up anybody's spot, but the place in which I used to work, the farm stand okay, place. yep, yep, yep. The, the farm stand. The, yes, the mother of of uh uh. Well, uh f- is this about to get real horny? It is. So God damn it! We went to school with this individual whose last name is the same last name as the place. His mom is uh, one of the managers. You're kind of gonna. Bl- you're. I think you're gonna blow up someone's spot if anyone does like basic research on you. It's you're blowing this person's spot. Anyway, up. it's early in the morning. I get called into the into the bakery. And uh, this individual's mom, who's also a manager, and also, like, I've known since, like, elementary school, his mom taught us how to make, like, cool eggs. Um, eggs uh-huh. asked me, she goes, hey, Brandon, um, um, what's a bew cake? Hot. And I, <laughs> he was like, this is a Hot. question, this is a question that you should ask your son and not an employee. I know you don't know what it is. But I don't want to be the one to explain to you what that is. Also, you're Hot. saying it wrong. Hot. <laughs> yeah. Hot. 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 What's a bee cake? And <laughs> just like, oh no. You know what gave me a, a bad dream? I read a. I was joking with someone, and I read a. Uh, uh, a fan fiction, a Sonic fan fiction, and I had a nightmare about it. Sonic Let's just say fiction. it involved the phrase "eat your chili dog." Oh, nice. Uh, no. <laughs> nice. No, it wasn't nice at all. Nice. <laughs> Eat your chili dog, Sonic. Eat your chili dog, Sonic. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't horny for that one. There's, I mean, are you sure? Yes. I mean, yeah. you're a post-puberty uh, male. I'm pretty sure. Unless I'm the weirdo who, like, at the drop of a dime is like, let's go. <laughs> Oh no 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 no! I'm, I have a life sentence in horny jail. Yes. Okay. <laughs> there's there's there, there's no doubt about that. I I am, I am. I got I got put into horny jail and they threw the key away because they're just like this man can't be a member of normal society without being in horny jail. I think, the month, sorry, yeah. Well, the year 
puberty hits. Your your young lad, puberty hits. You're instantly in forever just horny jail. Well, I I think I was able to avoid getting put in a horny jail for a little bit, but um, when it happened, it happened fiercely. It is. I'm going to... Sorry, Mom. Uh, I know you're listening, but listen, if you haven't already, you should probably burn the house down uh, and anything that was around um, since I hit puberty. <laughs> <laughs> the things that house has seen, Brandon. <laughs> the fucking things. Whew. Yeah. Oh, man. That's... I didn't even know you could do that with a shoe. <laughs> You can do a lot of things to and with a lot of other things. Hey, man, horny jail's a thing. <laughs> hey. So yeah, uh, if you're chi- if you're listening to this and any of this is upsetting to you, sorry, but holidays are the holidays is weird, folks. The holidays, holidays is, is weird. weird, and even though we're having the conversation we're having, we're both adults and professionals. Yeah, actually, very. Uh, honestly, almost as professional as you can get in our respective fields. Yeah, that's the scary thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually horrifying. Yeah, and we're both just sitting in rooms surrounded by toys talking about horny jail. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That being said, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of the monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's cryptids, miss. So we're, we're just chilling, having totally regular conversations. Um, I mean, from my perspective, this is all normal. This is actually given both of us. I've been totally I've been in a voice chat with some people who we mutually know, and um, it's been it's been wild. It's been buck wild. Um, these past couple weeks. Yeah, is this? Uh, because that, that there there's a few different Venn diagrams. Is this people that we mutually know that we also that like I could probably like jog to their house pretty quick. Uh. Yes, and uh, the person who is referred to as Muscle Man. Who do I know? Do you know? Yeah, from from uh, when we when we were playing at Good Game Shop, I became High Five Ghost, and they became Muscle Man. And the reason was was because we were playing Diablo together so much that nobody really understood how we had become uh, friends. I recall the first time meeting Muscle Man. This yes, was back yes. at uh, a, a, a person's I be- apartment, which... They, I believe it involved a knife. They fixed the pothole, and I had to pee, and there was a, um, I'm going to say, say a knife fight in the hallway that I had to, like, carefully yep. scooch past. Yes, there was a knife fight. <laughs> and that's how I met them. That That whole apartment was a degree of wild that I'm really not prepared to accept... It was wild. It was a good time. It was in the before times. I do recall a... Well, it was uh, in the before before times. It was in the before before times. Um, I do recall um, being out on the front porch and a skinny roommate coming out onto the front porch and I keep being very accusatory of people uh, having eaten her avocado. Uh, Were you there for the avocado incident? I don't recall. I was there for the avocado incident. Was that because? Because I remember sitting on the couch. Wait, yeah, you were there. I remember sitting on the couch with Nick, and we were watching, which gives away his name, but who cares? There's so many Nicks in the world. Um, we were watching Do Ra Ra Ra. Yep. Yeah. As as somebody was like, "Did you touch my avocado?" No. Who ate my avocado? And they were like having a freak out, and we're like leaving the room. Yeah. For a bit. Then coming back in and screaming about the avocado. And yes. we're pretty we were all pretty sure we knew who the person who ate the avocado was. Yeah. But none of us were snitches. Uh but <laughs> it was such a dumb moment. It was a dumb moment and also if I I could be combining multiple different memories you definitely from the are. apartment. Because I, I think I recall there being a pizza there and then the response to the avocado accusation uh, was, was Nick saying, like, 
Look, uh, look at us. Who nobody in this room eats vegetables. <laughs> or something yeah. along that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was it was absolutely a making fun of the fact that they were talking about us eating an avocado. Yeah, like there's not a healthy person in this. Like you're you're the healthy person. Yeah, we we would order we would regularly order personal sized pizzas from Domino's before they got good. Yeah, like before like it was good. it was from the before times when Domino's hadn't redone everything and people were all like, "Fuck Domino's." We yeah. were like, "Hey." It's cheap, and we can order it through an app, so fuck it. Let's yeah. eat it. It was before the Domino's we were buying from was uh, exposed for rising the pizza dough in the bathroom. Yep. <laughs> so what's this cryptid? Yeah, so it existed... Well, uh, <clears throat> this week's creature, parentheses creatures, uh, resides in New England, and I, I will point out, this is more an event. Uh, it's an event. Um, an event. Okay, it's an okay. event. Um, it's humanoid in appearance, so it's an event in which a group of people claimed a specific individuals were a monster. Um, okay. It existed between 1790 and 1890, and it's no longer seen today, it, meaning that the event's over. It's still You can still find the creature or whatever, but the event itself is, is no longer happening. So I'm going to say it's related to vampires in some way or vampirism. I can't for the life of me tell you the name of the event though. Why? So why do you think vampires? Why do I think vampires? Yes. Uh, Cause it's new England and that's a long time range. And it also kind of fits in the time range of where people were like super suspicious of people coming back from the dead. Okay, so it is the New England uh, vampire incident. Um, let me move this folder over so you can read it. I was trying to tri- bait you into Salem Witch Trials. Oh, no, that was not going to happen. 100 the, years is way too long for the Salem yeah, Witch Trials. That, this thing, I well, I'll, I'll just read the script. Um, but this is not, we're, we're not going to go into exactly what vampires themselves are. I'm assuming that if you're listening and you're still here after the horny jail talk... Um, you know you're what here, vampires are. One, one, get into horny jail. Yeah, what are you doing if out of your cell? If you're not in horny jail, get in that. Get into horny jail because you both you just des- you deserve to be in horny jail. <laughs> if it did, if me talking about a monster from a show about people turning into the seven seven deadly sins, tonguing someone to the point of pleasure, didn't scare you off, you need to be in horny jail. You do need to be in horny jail. You need to be in horny jail. That's just a fact. There's no question about that. But anyways, now that you're in horny jail, Brandon, continue. There are many variations of vampires across the world that we may dive into later and have already covered probably, I mean, some, I didn't, like, it was the Filipino uh, monsters, we, we covered some. Yeah, uh, we've only really covered one vampire. Vampires, it, vampires, werewolves, and... We covered certain creatures that have, like, vampire attributes but aren't explicitly yeah. vampires. Um <sighs> But that's not what's important right now. What's important right now is what Americans in the 1800s think vampires are, um, as there's no real deep uh, cultural or regional folklore for them, because America was new. There was uh, no... I dis- okay, I disagree with that, fundamentally. Okay. Um, because the previous... So this is me leaving horny jail and becoming an actual thinking adult. Um, so previous cultural implications still apply right so like wherever they came from in europe the cultural traditions of vampirism still are a part of it um it's not like local lore but wherever that person came from they carried their traditions their stories that's like the whole that's like the whole premise of american gods brandon yeah true Actually, like a hundred, that's explicitly like, true. That is explicitly the point of American Gods. But yeah. continue. Okay, so I, I was trying to bait you into the Salem Witch Trial, which this is not about. Um, we all learned about the Salem Witch Trials in school, which I got to sell a video, and, and there were boobs on it in school, so nice. Uh, did nice. you see that video? I don't know. I was in different classes. Yeah, True. I think it was it the Crucible on VHS where they rolled in the big CRT. I don't know. It was boring, but there were boobs in the intro, so it was, it was cool. Um, 
This is a topic. I don't, I don't think they. I don't think they had us watch a video in my class for the Crucible. We talked uh, about it. About the. About I mean, it, we read the Crucible. We learned about what happened around and before the witch trials, and then we watched a video with tits. Um, well, well, the real thing. The real thing is we also talked about the implications of the Red Scare because the Crucible was written at a time that the Red Scare was happening as a yeah. metaphor for it, so people could, so they could talk about it without being sent. To fucking the McCarthy trials instantly because Woo! we're a great country, America number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th- this is a topic that I have been sitting on. It's not a request per se. Um, I'm aware of it to an extent. Uh, I believe in October, Lenwood Sharp made a post in our Facebook group. One of many, by the way. Uh, he 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 made uh, a post about this, and I decided now is the time to dive into it. Um, and I'll go go ahead and bump his uh, thing because all the the articles he links are from lumberwoods.org, which is Lenwood's website. Um, and it, he he also linked um, to news articles from the time. And then for, from what I saw, he did retype scanned um, newspapers or found text versions of them, uh, oh, wow. which I like because I hate reading scanned. Uh, new- I do it. But I hate reading old-timey scanned uh, newspapers. God damn it, Brandon. Um, the witch trials were, uh, if you don't know, a perfectly rational and nothing batshit crazy. Uh, and, and I would like to point out that at this uh, the, the Salem witch trials Brandon. took place over the course of one year. One year and three months. It was a big to-do. Everyone's heard of it. There are movies and shit. It's commonplace. Well, the- wait, wait, wait. Are you Are you saying, wait. The rich trials were absolutely not rational in any way, shape, or form. Are you being sarcastic? Yeah, that was a joke. I, okay, I okay. Wrote that like, text. no, it, that was a joke. They were absolutely batshit crazy. Okay, okay. <laughs> More weight, all that shit. Um, okay, just just checking because like the way that read, it was more or less like you're like. No, nah, not a big deal at all. Nothing, nothing bad happened. No one, there, no one was unjustly murdered. It didn't like take like it wasn't explicitly racist and sexist in any way shape or form yeah unfortunately um there's no like font they, like you can do bold and italics but there's no like they should make a sarcasm button on like microsoft word where they get like squiggly or something so like a sarcasm font so it reads right when you're reading because <laughs> i write sarcasm a lot but it just doesn't come across sarcasm so much harder i okay so this is a, this is a, a detour because we're talking about fucking high school English. I wasn't paying attention in class one day. Um, I don't remember why I wasn't paying attached, cl- attention in class or whatever. Uh, but we had to read a modest proposal. Now, do you know what a modest proposal is about? No, I did not read modest proposal. So, a modest proposal um, is a satirical piece about eating babies. Uh, Jonathan Swift wrote it, and it was talking about how they should eat children for the sake of the... the uh, A modest proposal for preventing the children of poor people from being a burden a burden to their parents or country and for making them beneficial to the public <laughs> is the, the full title. Um, oh. Basically, it was about eating poor children. Yeah, so it said, let's see. It says the main idea is the story... Uh has to do with decreasing the overpopulation by selling babies as food. Swift suggests that the wealthy purchase the infants of the poor and serve them as a delicacy. Um, uh, yes. He gives specific details which are designed to discuss and enrage the reader. I read that as though it were not satire and wrote a, bo- a response to it. And the teacher, the one who definitely, definitely gets high... Ah, uh, I like that teacher. Uh, laughed and thought it was hilarious that I misinterpreted it. Because that's very fucking funny. But to be fair, though, like, now I learned more from fucking that up than I did from not fucking it up. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, for what it's worth, hey, you know, like, whatever causes you to learn it, like... Grades are such a weird fucking thing. Because. Especially in, like, things like that. Because, like, honestly, I successfully. Yeah, you you learned. 
in a very interesting way about it, but grades in a comprehension based or uh, uh, like non skill based class are weird. They're basically worthless. Anywho, let's let's get back to the video. yeah. Anyway, so my, my point is the Salem Witch Trials, which everyone heard about, took place of, over the course of just over one year. The New England Vampire thing took place over a hundred years. Yeah, I I've, I've known about it, but the, I did not you know, know the, about it. I did not you know, know the, about it. Like I knew you know, a little bit about it, but you know the reason why, right? Is literally because of the Crucible. Yeah. It's it's literally because the Crucible exists as a piece of American literature. If yeah. it weren't for the Crucible, like I don't think the Salem Witch Trials would be anywhere near as like well known. Because yeah. like there's a <laughs> modern piece of literature that was timely and uh honestly was very easy to make into a movie. Yeah. The... And digestible, so Yeah. Yep. If I recall properly, which I do because I went back and double checked, <clears throat> there is a dollop about it uh, a long time ago, like in the double if digits. I if I recall yeah. properly, which I did research and I, it's, it, yeah, it's there. Um, there was a dollop about it and I read some things on the internet at some point. So I, I knew a little bit about it, but I wish I found out about it the same way that Nick Bellatonia, writer for the Smith- Smithsonian, did. Um, and specifically, Nick Pelotoni and an archaeologist who he's writing about. Now, Nick is a writer for the Smithsonian, and his article describes an archaeologist working for the state of Connecticut in 1990, in which he was called in to investigate a series of graves which police thought belonged to a then-famous serial killer, um, who I'm not going to name. If you want to know their name, read the article. It's linked, but I'm not putting that guy's vibes out there. Um, but he dug up some corpses and found some interesting things. First is that they were from the colonial era, so unless we had ourselves a time-traveling serial killer, whoever did it wasn't the guy. And second... Oh my god, dude, dude. Yeah? Time-traveling serial killer would be such a great, like, (laughs) premise for a a movie. It would. Or a TV show, like... But then, like, the twist at the end... Oh, all right, here's... All right, here's our... Here's our... Here's our script. It's... There's... Time traveling serial killer, but here's what happened. It's really a guy got a time machine and he's going back in time and he's killing Hitler and he's killing whoever invented Uggs and he's killing Mussolini. Well, but because uh, they didn't do their bad things yet, they think uh, he's just guy. a run of the mill serial killer, but really he's killing bad people from his present, not the present in which the bodies are found. That's kind of a that's kind of the premise for. But you only know that the at whole... the very end. But that's also now that I'm it's thinking about it, this is also kind of the pre- premise of the Umbrella Academy. Oh uh, yeah, just slightly different. Yeah, true. Well, at least we know our idea was good because Umbrella Academy was good. Well, but it's also different. But yeah, no, it's there's there's a thing we could yeah. we could make a time traveling serial killer show. So he he dug up some corpses and found some interesting things. First was that oh I already read that part. Uh, pretend that you didn't hear me. Just reread half a sentence. Uh, second is that many of them were children, and lastly, that the bodies were, and I quote, completely rearranged. Uh, like some psycho Mr. Pot- Potato Head stuff. Thigh bone on top of spinal columns, decapitation, Jolly Roger arrangements, etc. Uh, just have fun with the corpse, I guess, is how he found a lot of these hey, bodies. Hey man, they didn't have Minecraft back in the day. They didn't have Minecraft, so what, you or gotta spore. jumble up the bones to have fun. Uh, yeah. These human jumble ups happened post mortem, which fuck, I hope so. Um, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no, Brandon! Brandon! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> this is this. What is this? The fourth sequence <laughs> of human centipede. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, so some estimated about five years uh, after death. Uh, soon after, a colleague asked him, "Bro, ever heard of the Jewett City Vampires?" And I imagine his mind was then thoroughly blown. In As he w- took a huge bong rip, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You ever hear of the Jewett City Vampires? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. It there's, was wild. There's Sublimes just playing in the background. Um, 
And uh, you like, he, he said, have you ever heard of the Jewish city of vampires? And then handed him 40 ounces to freedom and just walked away. <laughs> Damn it. Um, in New England, uh, some corpses were sp- suspected um, to be leaving their graves at night in order to consume their living victims, commonly relatives. The easiest way to dispose of such a creature was to remove and burn the heart, remove and rearrange them bones, and just kind of burn some guts. Um, I guess the logic uh, of it uh, is... If, uh, I can't... I, this is the most typo. Oh, good job, Brandon. If it, if it didn't semicolon die from its heart burning when it came back... Oh, I gotcha. When it came yeah, back yeah. to life uh, with its ribs where its head should be and its head and its butt and its legs out, its rib cage, uh, it wouldn't be able to, like... The idea is you're rearranging the bones to, like, make it not able to move. Like, some kind of weird spore monstrosity. Yeah, Brandon, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make fun of your spelling too, too much. It's... But wooden doesn't have an E. <laughs> it's... If you knew how fast <laughs> I type, though... I type, I type very fast. fast. I yeah. type fast. I also type fast. But I type fast and then don't spell check. There you go. <laughs> I also type, and then I've done this before, where I'll be at work and someone will ask me a question, and I'll be typing something, talk to them, and then I'll start typing the words that I'm saying instead of the sentence I'm supposed to be typing. That's why you don't keep typing while you're talking to someone. Oh. Okay. Commonly, this was performed by friends, neighbors, and parents of the deceased. Often the town's fathers, not priests or daddies... Um, would vote on whether to exhume the uh, corpse uh, as well as the elders and the clergymen. So I don't, ta- I don't know what town father is because it it did not say priest. Like I, I think it literally means daddies, like parents, I, which uh, is a weird governing system. It, 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 all right, God damn it. That um, I think I. Th- I think it has something to do with pilgrim pilgrims and all that shit. Like I, a phrase. Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I just wrong. read that. I didn't really look too far into it. Just how it's worded. They mean literal p- male parents. Um, like, like it might be, it might be like a puritanical thing. Maybe. Where, like it's like the elders. Yeah. Although you're saying elders, so... I, yeah. I don't know. So, so you could easily tell if a corpse was really a vampire eating people um, because when exhumed, the body looked different in a way that no dead body would during natural decomposition. The stomach would get bigger, not from gases naturally forming within the body as it breaks down, but oh, because of, of how much it was eating. It would eat I that much. I see what you're doing here. The, the hair and fingernails would continue to grow from the aging process not from the skin retreating through Mm -hmm, natural mm -hmm. decomposition processes and blood would still be present in the body it would actually pool on the bottom because that's what happens when you drink blood not because that's what happens when you Mm -hmm, die mm -hmm. these are things that only happen to living dead yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yeah. all that checks out. None of that, yeah. none of that seems as though it was okay. Cool, cool, cool continue. Yeah, do, yeah. Do. The easiest way to tell if a vampire is feeding upon you is that one, you had a family member who died. Two, mm-hmm. you and your family members no longer feel so good. There may be some weight so- weight loss, chronic cough, uh, and sometimes that cough will uh, release some mucus which contains blood, and you'll have the night sweats. What well, would I call it? Friday night. Yeah, it's just a Friday night. Well, th- this is most likely signs of predation of a vampire up- upon you and your family. This could be, and this is also really rare, the rampant spread of tuberculosis. I don't know what you're talking about. The, at the time, Tuberculosis is not real. Just like birds, tubercul- tuberculosis is not like a real birds. thing. Tuberculosis is not real. At the time, Tuberculosis can't hurt you, Brandon. It can't. At the time, it killed 25% of all infected children and 50% of anyone it infected at all. Um, Wait, were children more likely to survive tuberculosis? Is what that's saying? Children were more likely to survive. It killed... So, of the 50%, a quarter of them were children. Um, But, Brandon... I don't know if that's how those numbers work, but I'm not going to 
to do the math. Yeah, math be hard, man. Uh, but Brandon, it must be a vampire seeking revenge on its family. Otherwise, why would it be more rampant among family members of the recently deceased? You ask? And that's because multi-general households were common, and it is a bacterial disease spread through the air. Not only that, but they also shared the same bed. Hot. <laughs> oh, shit. Talking about... Listen, if you're in a multi-general household sharing a bed with a kid that just hit puberty, holy shit. I, I got to imagine that, like... For a while in our history, like puberty was the most dreaded moment of existence. But like for any family, you hear a child's voice crack, and you're like, "Oh shit, <laughs> fuck! Get the soap." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we don't have soap. <laughs> fuck! Get the calcium chloride. Um, oh no, the um, uh, uh, that reminds me of a Auntie Donna sketch in which uh, it's talking about. Uh, Camping with friends and masturbating in the tent. <laughs> oh, I saw that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, the key is ask first. Ask first. Ask first. I watched all of Anti Donna's uh, Netflix show in one day. Anti? Anti Donna. Auntie. Yeah. Auntie. Auntie Donna. Yeah. But that, I love that uh, show so much. I recommend it. Uh, little man. <laughs> I like, do you remember the jukebox scene with Paul F. Tompkins? Yes, yes. Whereas I love that he's, uh, he's like, but spoilers, Paul, spoilers for for yeah, Auntie Donna's I'm gonna big old ruin a fun. joke in the last episode. So, so he's like, don't be such a, and he draws a square with his fingers. Cunt! It was so good. I recorded it. I sent that out to people. It was great. Um, just as a side note, what what we think of as olden time diseases are still very prevalent. Um, even in the United States, for, for example, uh, tuberculosis, um, as of 2018, about 25% of the world's population was infected with it, most cases in Eastern Asia. Um, and the United States, uh, a common disease we tend to think of as like a medieval disease, is the bubonic plague, which is actually rather common in the U.S., uh, specifically in the homeless uh, population in California. Um, so that's not a medieval disease, that's a current day in america it's just their disease um and in a more recent uh past uh or actually a present present is hiv aids which uh, more people die from a day than from uh coronavirus today when coronavirus is at its worst it's ever been um uh, which by the way it's never changed from an epidem epidemic status we just, don't, lot I, we just don't talk about it. Uh, there's a lot I could say about that, but we're not a politics podcast, and I'm not going to go down that road. But, yeah, there's a lot of problems with that. There, yeah, there, there's a lot of problems. Um, so let's go back to the joy of colonial diseases. Um, a moment of silence to mentally piss on Reagan's grave. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I didn't read it, but there is some stuff in there. Okay. <laughs> Um. Uh, uh, Colonial diseases. And now they didn't exclusively Mr. Potato Head the vampires in uh in Maine or uh as they call them lazy. They just flipped the body over and reburied it, which I guess they figured vampires were too lazy to roll over and dig up. Well, here's the thing: they're just gonna dig all the way to the other side of the planet, but they're gonna hit that core. Where the the cluster at the core of the planet exists from Steven Universe, um, that's just a clustering of shattered, which is a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the 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 people in Maine, and, and specifically because this has a lot to do with children, that's really disrespectful. Because do you think your dead child is so dumb it can't figure out how to turn around and crawl out of a grave uh, to drain your essence? Just yes. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you met children? Have you met someone with a main accent? So I guess yes. <laughs> yeah, but like just by the blood pooling at the bottom of their corpse, they should be able to tell which way is up. Um, in Vermont, they would burn the heart. Uh, in Rhode Island, they got really creative. They opened up the body and removed the organs, then removed the head and reburied the body and burned the organs and inhaled the smoke as a cure to, to tuberculosis. 
Um, yep. Also, they ate some of the bits. So way to go, Rhode Island. If you're sick, smoke your dead child's heart. Um, that's the play. It's that- absolutely a play. That <laughs> That's... Do you... All right. So that kind of goes into the whole, like, rarity of materials equals potency. Do you know how rare a child's dead heart is? <laughs> it's so rare. In the colonial era, not that rare, yeah. to be honest. Actually. Also today, not that rare. Yeah, no, no. In, in retrospect, it's not that rare at all. Yeah. We just like to pretend that it's rare. Uh, something um, I did not find in my research, uh, but was in the dollop episode uh, that they did, was that people from Rhode Island did move to Connecticut, and Connecticut at this time was only cutting out and burning hearts. So when Rhode Islanders showed up to the party smoking baby hearts, the people <laughs> in Connecticut were like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like, they were like, these people are nuts. Um, and, that, and that's something coming from people who just liked to burn Peepum's heart. Oh, Peepum. Um, now, I did poo-poo for Vermont for not being creative with the body desecration, um, but what they did do is make a bigger deal of the desecration of said body. They would have uh, lantern-lit affairs, uh, burning hearts on the stock at the center of town, gathering large crowds, which, I mean, that's never... Uh, benefited the disease more than the people is large group gatherings where you're mask people, um, sometimes containing several hundred people. Seems good. Um, at a certain point, why wouldn't you just start burning the hearts as a rule of, like, a, a, a matter of fact? Like, once someone's dead, it's like, all right, remove that heart. We're going we're gonna to prevent this vampire like, thing from happening. We're going to nip it in the bud. They don't need it anyway. They're dead. Just burn the heart to, to begin with, and then maybe you'll start to realize that nobody has a heart, but we're still getting sick. Maybe we could look elsewhere. Um, Shh. Yeah. <laughs> In Mar- Manchester, Vermont, hundreds of people flocked to a 1793 heartburning ceremony at a blacksmith's <laughs> forge. This, sound, this is like this is like Woodstock of the 1700s. Yes, like it's nuts. Uh, Timothy, hey, did, did, were you? Did you go to Heartstock 93? No, I missed it, man. Yeah. Oh, it was wild. They bur- they burnt like ten children's hearts. It was insane. Don't take the brown acid. There's oh, also, not saying names, but someone who we played Dungeons and Dragons with in the past um, was just offered acid and was like, sure, yeah, I'll, t- like, I'll, I'll take it. Oh. So took it home, and then this individual Wait. proceeded to take said acid and play. They were a min maxer. Um, if, if that answer, if you're trying I, to figure I know out who it is, I yeah. know who it, I already knew who it was. Yeah. Played, I think it was Outlast on acid. <laughs> Seems good. Which is like the, a terrifying game. And then said that, they said, Brandon, I made a mistake. I said, yeah, you don't play horror video games on acid for the first time. And also don't do that Usually, at night because acid is also like, you. it's like a stimulant. So you're not going to like sleep for a little while. So don't play, do it at nighttime. Also, you shouldn't take acid do it by in the yourself morning. the first time. Yeah, don't take acid by yourself the first time. Maybe avoid taking acid yeah. in general. Yeah, just just avoid in the general. Psychedelics. Like, I, I'm not I'm not knocking it. I know some people like psychedelics, but like, be careful out there. Yeah, um, uh, definitely, definitely. If you're going to go down that route, be have somebody who's already been down that road with you. Have a sh- have 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 a psychedelic sherpa. And then have a safety couch. Yes. That's what you need to have. You need to have the safety couch, and you need to have someone else who's done it before. Or a safety tube. No, don't, no, don't, no. I'm just, <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> well, there's an in joke. Um, okay. Oh, man. Um, so Timothy Mead officiated at the altar in the sacrifice to the uh, demon vampire who it was believed was still sucking blood of the then living wife of Captain Burton. Um, and early town history says that uh, it was the month of February and good slaying. Ah, oh, sweet. Sweet. Um, 
Philip Saladin. Sli- 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 slaying. Slagging. Sledging. Sledging. Slagging. Slagging. But Anyways. The, the slaying was, was more for like vampire slaying, not like s- s- going down a hill slaying. This is a little early, but but how does how does uh, Abraham Lincoln factor into all this? I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. I did too. I am not going to lie. I thoroughly enjoyed I it, and I told people at work about it, and then, because someone said, it's like, someone at work was like, talk, they're like, I saw the title of the craziest movie on Indemand, it's called Abraham Vink, Lincoln Vampire Hunter, and I was like, stop, watch it, because it's actually good, and then they watched it, and they're like, dude, that was actually a good movie. <laughs> it was fun. Like, this is like an older, like an older, like motor engineer was like was like oh, I saw the craziest movie title I was like watching he's like you know that's actually good and I was like haha I did my it's job got Mary Elizabeth Weinstead in it um <clears throat> and she's attractive yes now uh Philip Saladay and family came from Sweden to live in Scotia Ohio County Ohio uh, this is not this is not the New England this is I mean it's close enough Ohio is not New England but continue it's the Buckeye continue. State um, I'll, I'll fight. I'll fight on that, but w- w- I'm not going to fight hard. Uh, believed uh, consumption now, TB is believed to be hereditary at the time, uh, and ran its course through the family. The eldest son died, and then soon after, others began to show symptoms of TB. Philip was among the members of the c- community to die. The county decided the best course of action was to exhume several bodies, including that of Philip, and burn them in the presence. of of a la- large concourse of spectators. Uh, however, the disease continued to ravage the community. Uh, that sounds about... That sounds like tuberculosis. Yep, that's a uh, good old TV for you. Um, one of the most recent and well-documented of the estimated hundreds of vampire slings was that of 19-year-old uh, Mercy Lena Brown in 1893, which, before I continue... Uh, I want to point out that this is years after the production of the automobile and a couple years before the x-ray. Only two years before we came out with x-rays and we already had automobiles. Like, hey, Brandon. Yeah? I-, I can't be surprised by anything because people still believe vaccines are from the devil. So They are from the devil. They're made from devil semen. I'd get vaccines just on that premise. I would too. Do you know how strong you would get if it was actually from the devil? Yeah. I mean, I'd pay that price. Yeah. I would too. Maybe the devil... Is it because... Okay. So is vaccines from devil because vaccines made by science? And science is knowledge. And Lucifer is the bringer of light. Light being knowledge. So therefore science is the devil? Brandon, I guarantee that you've just put more thought into this than anyone has ever put into this ever. What? Because literally in the Bible, the concept I, no, of knowledge—the I'm saying, I'm, concept of knowledge—is what evil is. Yes. No, you're correct. That is that <laughs> like, is fully correct. That's what but, it says. It's a little upsetting. Well, let's let's not alienate our our Christian audience. <laughs> okay. If you're Christian, go read about King James and then learn about the guy who wrote the, or had the Bible rewritten for you. Anyway. Um, God damn it, Brandon. <laughs> Mercy was of Exeter, Rhode Island. Um, deserted Exeter. Uh, it was dubbed or simply one of the border towns. Uh, it was largely a, a subsistence... Subs- I can't say this word, subsistence farming community with barely uh, fertile soil. Rocks, rocks, and more rocks, says Sheila Reynolds Boothroyd, uh, president of the Exeter Historical Association. Uh, Exeter at the time was a ghost town, many people having died during the Civil War, uh, and that was followed by a bad farming year and then tuberculosis. Uh, Seemed bad. Yeah, the population dropped from uh, roughly 2,500 to 961 uh, some sections looking like a ghost town. Wow. The, the same year uh, Murthy's, Mur- Murthy, Mercy's mother died of TB, <laughs> a doctor stated that the illness was caused by, and, and this is not specifically to her mother, it's, it's TB in general, T- 
TB yeah. was caused by drunkenness and wants among the poor. So if you're drunk or if you're poor and wish you weren't poor, that's how you catch TB. Um, I mean, that's how you, that's, that sounds like capitalism to me. That, yeah, that's capitalism. And we're definitely not seeing anything at all similar happening still. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Brandon. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up with that. Uh, stop, stop trying to draw parallels between our past and our future. Yeah. Our present. Uh, stop it. <laughs> Luckily, it could be cured by the consumption of brown sugar and horseback riding. See, all, but see, the thing is, like, Drunkenness is basically brown sugar. That's yeah, but here's the thing: you're basically consuming brown sugar. Uh, if you're it's poor, just, it's a get brown a horse. sugar with a fun bit. Yeah. Huh? So if you're poor, get go buy a horse, and that's how you get better. Well, but you might be wanting a horse, so then you're gonna get sicker. If you want, a, yeah. If you want the horse, then you're gonna get more sick. Yeah. 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 Uh, the year after her mother died, her sister died. The whole town came out for her funeral and sung. One Sweetly Solemn Thought, which is uh, a song she chose for her funeral, uh, which I didn't know was an option, but I will surely start a Spotify playlist for my wake, consisting of Uzi Vert, John Coltrane, and Slipknot. Um, There's going to be a lot more. If I'm in control of that, I'm going to make sure the Slipknot stays on longer than usual for you. That is A-OK by me. Um, Also, it's a little bit fucked up that she, like... That's a thought you had is like, I'm dying, so I'm going to choose the song people will sing for me. That's honestly less fucked up than some of the things you've mentioned in this episode already. Yeah, I want Cause, everyone cause that's gather in a church and sing a WAP at my wake. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Um. A few years later, her brother became ill and moved to Colorado Springs. Mercy's TV was of the, quote, galloping kind, meaning she was asymptomatic for years, but when she started to show symptoms, holy fuck, did she start to show symptoms. It came oh, hard and fast. I know Mercy Brown. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of her before. Okay, continue, continue. She, I think she's the most Honestly, famous that, one. That just, like, 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 the gears clicked in my head. The gears started that. going? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so the, the galloping thing was what clicked it for me. Yes. Okay. So one newspaper wrote uh, of Mercy's uncle, if the good wishes and prayers of his many friends could be realized, then Eddie would have been speedily restored to perfect health. Uh, I mean... Which is the colonial way of saying your Facebook thoughts and prayers don't mean shit. <laughs> <laughs> thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Um, no, fuck your thoughts and prayers. Uh, donate to the GoFundMe to pay for the fucking medical bills that are going to make us homeless. Um, which, there's, like, insurance companies there's, started recommending yeah. GoFundMes. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Because everything is good and nothing is terrible. Deciding to be proactive, several people from the community went to the George Brown, uh, and suggested that one of the three brown women were actually a vampire feeding on Eddie and that they should get they should get to the bottom of this. So he allowed for the hunt for the vampire to begin. The vampire. After nearly a decade, Lena's sister and mother were barely more than bones. Lena, which is also Mercy, that's Mercy's middle name, but I think that's what she went by at the time, okay. uh, though had uh, been dead only a few months and it was wintertime. The body was fairly... Uh, well preserved uh, the correspondent uh, later wrote uh, the heart and liver were removed and in cutting open the heart clotted and decomposed blood was found uh, weird during the impromptu autopsy the doctor emphasized that Lena's lungs showed diffuse per- de- 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 she done had consumption there? in her lungs okay uh, the villager then <laughs> <laughs> The villager then burnt the organs on a rock and fed them to her brother. He then died shortly after. <laughs> That's what I remember from the story. That someone was sick, so they fed him his own sister. <laughs> and it didn't Here, work. Here, have this. Go fucking figure. Oh, Weird. Wow. I'm going to try, try, start trying to curse less next episode. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we had... Listen, listen. It's the holiday season. It's it's cursing. Cursing is the time. This is the t- season for cursing. Cryptidmas. 
You have Crypt- Crypted Miss. And Mer- Encrypted Miss. You don't say Mary Crypted Miss. You say that F word 13 times in a row while making eye contact with somebody. Yeah. Uh, it, it's frankly sexual at a certain point. It. Oh, you have to say it slow. Everyone is slowly say it slower. So you start fast mm-hmm. and slow, slow, slow. And then the last one you shout. Um, mm. the, the interesting thing is how specific this panic was uh, to the Northeast. One writer in uh, a Connecticut newspaper wrote after learning about an 1854 gra- di- grave digging, um, we seem to be transported back to the darkest age of unreasoning ignorance and blind superstition instead of living in the 19th century and in a state calling itself enlightened and Christian. Um, <sighs> three years after Mercy Brown uh, died, a New York World newspaper made its way to a stage manager in London by the name of Bram Stroker. And three years after that, Dracula was written. That's why I know about her. Yes. So That's explicitly why I know about her. New England, the New England vampire panic is the, the root cause of Bram Stroker try, like, writing Dracula. I mean, arguably you could say it's the root cause of modern vampire myth. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um... So yeah. Uh, uh, all right. I was hoping. He, I, was, I was hoping the last. Uh, that's why I structured it in the way in which I did. I was hoping this last uh, <clears throat> run-on sentence would blow your mind. <laughs> it unfortunately didn't. No. <laughs> because once again, I have approximate knowledge of approximately many things. Yeah, we, we have approximate knowledge of approximate. Uh, it's not like we've had uh, been talking about weird shit for a couple years. <laughs> Purely out of a love for weird stuff. Oh, so it looks like a name was renamed on our our list. A name was renamed? Yeah, it's no longer Thomas Granger. Oh, oh, uh, we'll update that and then I'll update my copy. Wait, what? That's the name. Now. <laughs> All right. Um, so so as always, copy this. if I don't, I don't have anything else for this episode. Do you? I do not. Yeah. Uh, it was. It was. It was an episode. We'll just leave it at that. Um, as always, if you enjoyed the podcast, wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, our website is cryptopediacast dot com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast dot com. Our Twitter is at cryptopediacast. Um. SoundCloud don't use anymore. Email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Um, if you want to support the show, good on you. We have a Patreon. The link is in the show notes. Um, and if you are a jackalope, you get mentioned on the podcast. So our jackalopes include Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and the renamed Fuck Andrew Jackson. Yes. <laughs> we have a Facebook group in which there are a lot of people. And I really, I don't, can't explain the boom we've been having. What, it was group. something like 17 people over the course of like three days. Yeah, it was wild. It was absolutely wild. Um, I thought, I don't, I, all I texted you, I was like, do you know what happened? No. Because we get the odd request. Like, we usually get the odd request, but we never get, like, a bunch of them all together. Oh, yeah. It was a bunch of people. Um, So, yeah, that happened. Uh, We also have a Discord, which is more active than the Facebook group. Um, If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate, review, subscribe. Please. Please. Pretty please. Please. We don't have... We haven't gotten a like review or subs- uh, or a uh, rating in like a year. <laughs> to be fair, I don't think any podcasts ever get ratings like the. They do. They do. do they? they do. They do. They do. I mean, like big podcasts have a lot of ratings, but podcasts get they're, ratings. They're, they're podcasts which I believe are big, but they also when they do get ratings. So you th- oh, I haven't listened to them in a little bit. Go, but even like last podcast would just be like, "Holy shit, someone ra- rated us." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think that's true. But anywho, if you have any monster requests or stories, get in line. Um, we have a but great also, track record. But also tell us because I do enjoy finding out about things I never heard about. 
I'm working on one right now that is a request that will eventually happen when I finally remember to continue reading the book. Um, is this the one from the last episode or a different one? It's a different one in response to the fact that the lost one is problematic and I'm still looking for someone who has that as a part of their cultural tradition so I can interview them and talk to them um, and make the episode not just a bunch of white people talking about the thing that is representative of white people. Huh. <laughs> um, anywho. Uh, let's see. Is that we did this part? We did that part. Oh, it's Brandon's turn. Uh, you can it find me turn. on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is Brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto Brandon, capital C, capital B. My Instagram is at mu2057. My Twitter is at J Dunham. My website is johndunbeams.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. His Instagram is at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. His email is tommikehill at gmail.com. And I did not see him at Hannaford this weekend. Oh. Um, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs> Like that episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I was playing Phasmo just lo with randos, and yeah, uh, yeah. there's hackers are now a thing. Not what? hackers, but like mods are a thing. There's a, a guy modded it, so he just bankrolled all of us the entire time. But he could also move at like super speed, and then Weird. also just teleport you back to the van if you were in danger. <laughs>